Here we are on Golden Globe nomination morning. I am here with, with uh, senior editors for Gold Derby, Daniel Montgomery, Denton Davidson, and Marcus Dixon. I'm Ray Richmond, news and features editor at Gold Derby. And uh, we're looking to see uh, what, we're, what outraged us, what surprised us, and what was pretty much ho-hum. And uh, let's start off with uh, looking at the best television drama nominees. Uh, Better Call Saul finally got in. Yay, Better Call Saul. Um, and the Crown, House of the Dragon, Ozark, and Severance. No, no surprise with Severance after 14 Emmy nominations. Any surprises there, gentlemen? For me, I was shocked that Ozark did so well. Um, I mean, they got more nominations than I was predicting. Um, and then Yellowstone again left off the list. I, we we keep sort of hope dicting this at Gold Derby, and and it never happens. Kevin Costner got in for Best Actor, but um, Yellowstone was the biggest snub, uh, followed by Lord of the Rings, Rings of Power. Yeah, it's so weird because you know all season long it's been House of the Dragon versus Lord of the Rings, and now the Globes have have decided that the House of the Dragon is the better show according to them, and it also got in for lead actress. Um, I also want to mention, you know, Abbott Elementary was the big odds nominee, um, five nominations for Abbott, and then The Crown at four, Dahmer at four, Only Murders, Pam and Tommy, The White Lotus, they all have four as well. Yeah, and yeah, Abbott Elementary is the first uh, the first network show to lead the nominations list in seven years, uh, and that was uh, American Crime, which was in like a 35 way tie with three nominations each uh, wow. with a bunch of other shows. Uh, and the last time a network comedy was the top nominee was Glee, um, which was, I think, 12 or 13 years ago. Uh, I think that also had five nominations that year. Hmm. And for Janelle James and Shirley Ralph to both get in supporting in a combined comedy drama supporting category, that's a big deal. I, I feel like Abbott Elementary is a slam dunk in this category now. Yeah, it wasn't a surprise that it did as well as it did, but you're right, to have all the, all the women nominated as they did, as well as um, for the series. <clears throat> um, I think they have to be favorites um, for mm -hmm. winning. And we have, uh, anybody surprised to see Hillary Swank nominated for Alaska Daily? Yes. That, that kind of came out of nowhere. Yeah, the, uh, another you know big feather in ABC's cap. ABC definitely you know, kind of overperformed if you think about it. But I mean, she is a two-time Oscar winner. You should never count out someone like her, but I, she wasn't in my predictions, that's for and sure. And a two-time Globe winner too. Mm. Yeah, um, and it, actually ABC, not just ABC, but like everything Disney owns did well, like Hulu did well and uh, Searchlight did well on the film side and uh, FX. Uh, so so this this was a uh, a good year if you're uh, in the Disney Corporation, which, you know, since you since you own just about everything that would that's not too surprising. <laughs> I think we had some predictions here on Friday, too, that uh, that Wednesday and Jenna Ortega were going to get nominated. And there they are. Yeah, if, I think of all of the shows that are nominated, that's the newest. I think that's the one that premiered most recently. And. If you're a Globe voter, you know, you love the shiny new toys and there's nothing newer than Wednesday. Yeah, the fact that it got in for series makes me think that Jenna Ortega is probably the biggest threat to Quinta Brunson for a uh, comedy actress. In fact, I can see them like if they want to double up an acting award with series. And I think Abbott Elementary is pretty secure for series. Um, they could go with Shirley Ralph or Janelle James uh, in mm -hmm. the supporting category. So uh, that, that could be interesting to see if they if they uh, go with the shiniest new object in, in Jenna Ortega in, in Wednesday. Mm -hmm. I think they, they will give it to Shirley Ralph. Um, she's still hot <laughs> that Emmy win and that Emmy speech. I'm a little bit surprised Matt Smith didn't make it in for the supporting actor. Where a lot of people thought he would win this. And then his show gets in for series too that that's kind of a strange snub yeah, yeah i wonder if they like that show as much as uh you know if if this is a kind of a re repeat of the game of thrones situation where uh it 
cleans up at the uh, Emmys consistently, and then the Globes just were never on board with Game of Thrones, really. And yeah, maybe they're just not that into House of the Dragon, even though they nominated it for series. Mm. Uh, another interesting thing is how well Better Call Saul did, but still no Ray Seahorn. So she's uh, she misses, even though they're getting this. Don't get me started time. on this. <laughs> what does she have to do? My God. And um, Severance was interesting. It, it kind of did OK. Like it, it was it was nominated for series like we expected and Adam Scott and John Turturro. But Britt Lauer we had third in our odds and she was snubbed. And so was Patricia Arquette, who was in our top five. So mm -hmm. the men got in, but but no severance women for this year. Another weird one is Hannah Einbinder. She gets a supporting nomination for Hacks. She was nominated in lead last year. So I wonder which, you know, there must have been some ruling or something where they they changed her. But um, I mean, she could she could pull off a win. She's beloved on that show and, and we know the globe voters love hacks because they gave hacks best comedy series and actress last year yeah and Jean smart too yeah this was a good year for uh borderline leads if i'm being generous uh going supporting um you know with uh with carrie mulligan and brendan gleason on the film side and uh here you've got uh, hannah einbinder and also, the limited supporting actor, Donald Gleason, who's really a co-lead in The Patient. Like, and that's, for the most part, a two-hander between him and Steve Carell. Marcus warned us over the weekend that um, in our last slugfest that Leslie Manville wouldn't get in for The Crown, and she did not. And I listened to you, so yes. but thank yeah. you. But, uh, the, well, but, but, but she the did third get in for Diana Mrs. Did. Harris. But she did get in for Mrs. Harris Goes to Paris, so Leslie Manville is doing yeah. it again. A lot and then, of and three Princess Dianas now. Correct. Yeah, three Princess Dianas in a row have been nominated at the Golden Globes. Uh, Emma Corrin won uh, all in different categories. Emma Corrin won Drama Lead Actress last year or two years ago. And then uh, uh, Kristen Stewart was nominated for Film Drama Actress last year and now uh, TV Drama Comedy Musical Supporting Actress for Elizabeth, Elizabeth Debicki. Oh. Um, White Lotus only got that one nomination last year, but this year they kind of made up for that by giving it four. And um, that supporting actress in a TV limited series race is really interesting to me because you have Jennifer Coolidge, who is the front runner at Gold Derby, but Aubrey Plaza was really good this season. And Nisi Nash Betts gave the performance of her career. Like, I don't know who I am going to predict to win this one maybe Nisi Nash maybe there will be a White Lotus vote split that's what I'm thinking because they're both so good if one was clearly so much better it would maybe work in their favor but I mean I think they're neck and neck and that would give Nisi the edge there Claire Danes was she a su surprise in the category you think yeah uh, I was just looking she was way down in 15th place in our odds for, uh, well, she got a movie. Critics' Choice nomination, so I had her, um, oh. but I have like I had never heard of the show until the Critics' Choice nominations came out. So mm -hmm. I need to go check that out because there's there's clearly something good going on there. Yeah, although in hindsight, uh, yeah, it, it shouldn't have surprised us who who didn't predict her. Um, just because the Globes love her. Uh, not only did she win for Homeland and Temple Grand, and I think she also won for My So-Called Life uh, yeah. in the 90s. So uh, when when Claire Danes is in the conversation, the Globes are usually paying attention. And Denton, you're a big fan of George and Tammy. Um, were you disappointed? It only got Jessica Chastain, but not series and not actor. I was. And it's it's interesting because I thought you know watching it michael shannon is like just stands out at least in the few first episodes and he does his own singing um so i was surprised maybe that category was just a little tougher for them or, or and maybe they just couldn't help but nominate just chastain again she's the reigning oscar champion mm -hmm. uh so maybe they just felt the need to to bring her back there wasn't a lot of surprises in in the supporting uh actor for movie tv limited series um our biggest snubs were michael imperioli and ray liotta um and for supporting actress were juliette benoche and laurie metcalf and they were really 
low. And we knew those categories would be sort of up for grabs. This was not a good year for deceased uh, people in the nominations. You know, Ray Liotta got in there. Um, Leslie Jordan got the Critics' Choice nom, but not the Globe. Not the Globe, exactly. Yeah, the Globes are very not sentimental, um, you know, except for, you know, uh, Chadwick Boseman winning. Uh, 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 that that felt like sort of a, a given um, that year for, for most awards groups, um, just because that death was so, so shocking and so sudden. Um, but like, cynically, the Golden Globes like to have people attend their party. So I don't think they're sentimental a lot of the times when it comes to uh, late performers who, who who have passed. Um, so uh, they yeah, they 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 filled that slot with uh, with Paul Walter Hauser. And, and uh, you yeah, know, he's he's thankfully still with us. And Donald Glover is back in the comedy actor race. You called that one, Ray. I did not. Yep. So congrats yeah. on that. I'm not sure why I called it, but it, it just <laughs> based on deserving and, um, you know, there he is. You're right. I'm, I'm uh, uh, every once in a while, I'll pull one out of my, well, <laughs> out of somewhere. <laughs> There's a lot of anger online for dead to me being snubbed. So I just wanted to mention uh, that. Yeah. There's no Christina Applegate, Linda Cardellini. It was the final season, um, but they, I mean, they could get in at SAG, SAG voters like that show and they like Netflix. So maybe. you know, like Christina is especially they seem to. Um uh I think uh I think that uh should wrap up our uh our slug fest for today. Uh everybody come back uh, make your uh predictions online and the globes are gonna be uh handed out on Tuesday, January 10th. And I hope everybody will be there to check out how well they did in their predictions. Um gentlemen, thanks very much. Uh, go get some coffee or uh, take a nap and uh, we'll see you soon. <laughs> All right.